Uh, on behalf of the EFDD, Mr Farage. I've been wondering why David Cameron's been slashing our armed forces, won't commit to 2%, is happy for us not to be able to defend our islands. I think Mr Juncker's given us the answer. We're going to do it at an EU level. We're going to have a European army. Now, when I raised this last year with the Deputy Prime Minister, Liberal Democrat Nick Clegg, he said it was a dangerous fantasy to even talk about an EU army. I hope every Liberal Democrat voter has heard Mr Verhofstadt today, the leader of the European Liberals, crying out for militarisation at an EU level. Of course, the truth is, it's already happening. We already have a European Defence Agency. We already have EU battle groups on active service all over the world. We already have an EU Navy active against the Somali pirates. And who can forget? Eurocorps here in Strasbourg last year, virtually goose-stepping that ghastly flag round the courtyard outside. And of course the Lisbon Treaty, Article 28, provides for all of this. Tony Blair was right. He said the European Union is not a project about peace, it's a project about power. And I think Mr Juncker is trying to seize on an opportunity. We ourselves in the European Union provoked the conflict through our territorial expansionism in the Ukraine. We poked the Russian bear with a stick and unsurprisingly Putin reacted. But this now is to be used as an opportunity to build a European army. And, and when, and when Mr. <coughs> Mr. Verhofstadt, I know that by heckling you increase your hits on YouTube because otherwise <coughs> nobody in Europe wants to listen to you and the President yeah. really ought to let second, me speak. Second, I'm really good. Just a moment, please. Just a moment. Thank Farage. you. No, second, Mr. Farage, just a moment, please. Um, just a moment, please. Just a moment. Mr. Verhofstadt, I turn to you. I have to ask you, please, to calm down. You may not like this speech, but we are Democrats and we listen to you too. So please do not interrupt. Well, we certainly are Democrats and uh, we've never shouted you down, uh, but you always try and shout us down. The point I was making is this, the opportunity is being seized and Mr Juncker said we must convey to Russia that we are serious. Who do you think you are kidding, Mr Juncker? <laughs> we do not want any part of an EU army, and I doubt the rest of the peoples of Europe do either. Thank you. So, Herr Farage. Thank you, Mr. Farage. Uh, you've exhausted your speaking time. We extended it even. Now, Mr. Verhofstadt, uh, we've brought him back to reason. However, well, reason is a question of definition, I suppose. But anyway, I'm not necessarily saying that you're the expert when it comes to defining reason, but what I can tell you is that I asked Mr. Verhofstadt to please listen to you. I hope he will continue to do so in the future. And to all of you, all of you, I would ask you also to make sure that you respect flags of whatever nature. Mr. Sulich, I believe you had a question. Is that right? Uh, so to uh, Mr. Farage, I take it. Is that right? In fact, I would like to ask Mr. Farage, what uh, do you think uh, that we should have to do, Mr. Farage, when uh, Russia, for example, is supporting with the most modern armaments, you know, the separatists? Do you, as a, an European Union, have to do something to support Ukraine, to, to uh, fight in the eastern Ukraine, or do you think that we should have to wait to fight on the western Ukraine for uh, the stability of Europe? Don't you think that we, we together, we have to send a clear message of solidarity and unity of the European Union considering this important subject. Thank you. A speech. We, through our territorial ambitions, provoke the overthrow of an albeit corrupt but democratically elected leader in the Ukraine. We have provoked this crisis. Now the question you ask is what do we do from here? I was in this chamber at the time when Libya was attacked. I heard the Liberals and the Greens screaming, frothing at the mouth for us to bomb Libya, 
for us to become militarily involved because we believed that would make things better. My view, sir, is if you look at Afghanistan, if you look at Iraq, if you look at Libya, and you look at the attempt to back the rebels in Syria, many of whom have now morphed into ISIS, we see that our recent foreign military interventions have made things worse, not better.